Those days are not far when India's anglophonic media may publish an inch-long news column on who is Rabindranath, as they do in the case of Shutten Bosch, Prafulla Chandra Rai, or Jagadish Chandra Bosch. As of now, in Bengal, where Rabindranath originated and reshaped Bengali culture, he is barely kept alive in social functions through diminishing interest in his songs and dance dramas. In this era of epidemics, not of coronavirus, but of pernicious influence of Angrezi and Angreziat, his thought process on matters of education is far more relevant today than even the newly formulated education policy of the government of India. It is definitely not a coincidence that his thought process on education with special reference to the use of mother tongue as medium of instruction is being killed by silence. Let me read out some excerpts of his writings on education composed about 90 years ago and try to understand its relevance, if any, in the modern times. Here is an excerpt. I quote, One must admit that West is the winner of the modern world. They are milking the world like a calm dhenu, and their pan is overflowing. We are staring from outside and feeling that our share, even daily means of subsistence are gradually being reduced. Since heat of hunger stimulates anger, the onlookers imagine of grabbing the raider. But how can one grab the raider who has already grabbed the onlooker. All opportunities are under the control of the raider, but why? Why and how have they won the right to milk the world? It must be due to some underlying truth. We may imagine somehow we will close rank and grab all their booties for our own consumption. Matter is not that simple. It is foolish to think that engine of a running automobile will follow my command if I hit the driver on his head. In fact, a kind of skill is operating in the shape of a driver to run the engine. Fire of my anger will not run the engine. The underlying skill has to be mastered. Hence, the force of our competition with the West can possibly match by any emotional reaction. Fact is, we have to master their skill and only, and only then you can compete. Which essentially means our greatest problem is the problem of education and learning. Therefore, let's now visit the ashram of Shukracharjo." Unquote. He wrote about 90 years ago, emphasizing the importance of education as a means of accessing technology, become competitive and enter the gateway to independence. So he proposed to visit the symbolic ashram of Shukracharjo, the great teacher mentioned in ancient Indian mythology for schooling to gain knowledge of technology. Ninety years ago, the so-called ashram of Shukracharjo, education and its institution were under the control of colonial masters. Hence, access to technology was also restricted. Now, 75 years after independence, is the ashram imparting knowledge of technology and turning out competitors to face the West? Most definitely not. Why not? Because clients of colonial masters are now controlling the ashram and making sure that education of the ashram is designed to eliminate competition with the West. Therefore, current education is designed to scavenge on the leftovers of the West. An additional layer of futility has been introduced in education to eliminate competition. That is, medium of instruction in foreign language has been introduced. Now let us see what Rabindranath Thakur 
said about efficacy of using mother tongue rather than a foreign language as a medium of instruction. Once upon a time, Latin was the medium of instruction in educational circle of Europe. Its main advantage was that international students could access that education through such a static language. Its disadvantage was the light of knowledge and wisdom hardly ever reached beyond the circle of learned community. Since each European nation used their respective mother tongue as medium of all form of education, only then education percolated amid all section of the masses. Only then significance of university blended into the feelings and senses of the general population. The moment education became exposed to the medium of mother tongue, her treasure of knowledge and wisdom increased, spread through the general population, merged with the wealth of knowledge of intellectual circles far and wide. All isolated pockets of scattered knowledge were harvested and wealth of knowledge stored in the nation's treasury. Now that European universities are generously international and yet it is intimately national, this is consistent with human nature. Unless one fully realizes self, one can't possibly surrender to the greater cause." Unquote. If decision makers of former colonial countries consider slavish imitation of colonial masters a secured route to development and prosperity, then why not imitate the education system of colonial masters? Introduce mother tongue as medium of instruction. In this context, isn't it perfectly legitimate to ask in whose interest English language is being used as the medium of instruction at all level of education in India? There can be any other purpose than to restrict or deny majority of the population access to education resulting in chronic poverty and underdevelopment. Rabindranath noted its consequence 90 years ago which remains a brutal fact to this day. Let's take a listen to his narrative. I quote, <clears throat> Question is being asked, why after such prolonged anglophonic education, we have not made any original contribution? Answer is simple. The source from where we have borrowed our education is the same from where we have borrowed our intelligence. Hence, we lack the courage and confidence to use intellect to become analytical. Regarding education and intellect, English youth is not as unsecured and fickle because he is surrounded by the ambient of original thinking and creation. A French intellectual can confidently judge English knowledge and wisdom because French education and learning is thoroughly indigenous and built into that is the means and ability to evaluate others contribution hence producer self is the authentic judge of the product qualified to determine the value and fit to decide what to retain and what to reject based on producers taste and opinion hence they are self-confident in the business of knowledge and wisdom. There can't be any originality without such confidence." Unquote. He questioned 90 years ago why after such prolonged anglophonic education we have not made any original contribution. This is brutally pertinent to this day. We should ask why 150 billion South Asian over 75 years after slavish imitation are simply scavenging on the leftovers of the West, have made no original contribution in the technological advancement of 20th century. The design of education in India looks more and more 
like breeding ground for cheap labor or intellectual coolies of Western market and make sure they do not become innovators and consequent competitors of the West. In continuation of this analysis, he points out, and I quote, a hesitant and unsecured medical student of Anglophonic school practices medicine based on their bookish knowledge but fails to contribute anything new in the field of physiology or medicine. A hesitant engineer of Anglophonic school works on the basis of bookish knowledge and drawing pension at the end of the career without contributing anything in the respective fields. We are undoubtedly sensing the futility of such so-called education. We are simply carrying education as a burden and failing to make education our career or vehicle." Unquote. This country has got a lot of talent, tremendous potential. Social ailments of a subjugated country induced by the pernicious effect of imposition of an alien language on masses observed about 90 years ago is a blight on the socio-economic life and so much of a reality. Instead of finding remedial measures, how does the decision makers of the society react? Here is Rabindranath again, I quote, Poverty of the nation is deplorable, but the deficiency of education system in this nation is shameful. Root of this deficiency lies in its unnatural and abnormal design, its isolation from the grassroot level. The most effective and intimate tool, that is bhasha, required for intellectual development remains most alien and grave impediment. In this country, link between learner and the learning tool is with a cable, not with the umbilical cord. Failure to establish connection of cord between the learner and the tool is rotting the root of our history and impairing intellectual maturity of the nation. This disconnect in numerous indispensable service of the state is a heavy burden on the general population. Various government offices, including court and their rules and regulations that regulate the fate of millions of Indians remain totally inaccessible and incomprehensible to the masses. Distance between national sentiment and feelings and system of education and its contemptible limited availability has always pained me because I feel convinced that of all dependency, the most damaging is imitation in education." Unquote. We will continue to discuss viewpoints of great personalities of India on matters related to the use of mother tongue as medium of instruction in all level of education. This issues have been concealed from public views so that nation do not raise questions on the induced epidemic of Angrezi and Angreziat, which is decomposing the inner core of the national fabric.